everyone. This is Rachel with Rachel Super Cute Creations. And this is take two on the hanky dress. So I apologize. Camera was acting up. Um, so while people are jumping on, I'm going to go ahead and iron this back out so we can start from the beginning. Um, so we don't have anybody that's missed anything. So I apologize. Thank you for jumping on again. Um, sometimes YouTube and camera systems are just funny. So thanks for joining. Thanks, Christine. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming back. All right. We're going to try this again. Okay. So we're going to go step by step in case you're just starting from the beginning. And so you have your hanky. We have just put a little bit of starch on it just to, to, to give it a little bit of stability as we start folding. Thank you, Nancy, for coming back. Thank you, Luann. I so appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half, and I'm just going to finger press it. So I'm finger pressing it, and I know that this part is going to be the bottom of my dress, okay? So when I'm pressing this, I know that this is going to be the bottom of my dress. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to take the right side and I'm going to put it right to this line where I just folded. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to finger press it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this side and do the same thing. So now what we have is we should have four strips. And I know it's hard for you to see on here. But with the starch, these little pieces are going to pop up. And here is my center mark. So I'm going to grab this first one, and I'm going to fold it right to my center mark. And I'm going to finger press it. And I'm going to grab this next peak, and I'm going to fold it to my center mark, and I'm going to press it. Now, here at this point, I like to take an iron. And I like to give this a good press because I like to be able to, to fan my dress out. Now, if you don't have an iron, you know, or you don't have one handy, don't worry about it. You can um, just do this by hand. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so the next part is now that we have the center part, we are going to flip it over and we are going to take the bottom part and we're gonna go up to about a half inch. I'm gonna leave about a half inch up here, about a half inch, and I'm going to just press it with my fingers down here, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it back down and I'm going to fold the body of the dress. Now here is where you decide how long you want your dress to be. Okay, if I want a long dress, if I want a long dress, all I'm going to do, this is the bottom of my dress, all I'm going to do is make a little short half inch or quarter inch pinch right here. If I want a shorter dress, I'm going to pinch it up farther. You decide how long you want your dress to be. And a lot of times if I'm going to use these on a journal, I will kind of measure my journal to say, okay. This is about how tall it can be. So if I want this to be on a journal, I'm just going to take my journal page or cover and I'm going to adjust it to the height of my page. OK, if I wanted it to be real small. I would have to. Kind of do a double tuck. Like this, and then I would have a real small dress. See how that is? So you decide how you want to do it. So in this case, I'm just going to show you the basic way to fold it. So you're folding up about a half inch from the top. 
Then you're going to fold back down. And you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So let me show you the back. So the back looks like this. You have the tuck. I went down about an inch because these hankies are, are pretty good size. And I think that's a pretty good size dress. It gives me a good bodice and it gives me a good length of skirt. Okay, so now that we have that piece, now we're going to go ahead and we are going to begin the origami fold part. And the, the next part is I have now adjusted this. Now I'm going to open the pleats to my dress. So I do that by taking the dress and just finger pressing it out. So I'm going to open it up again and I'm going to finger press this out. And we now have the front pleat of the dress. You can decide how big of pleats you want or how if you want closer pleats. I like to open it right up. So that's why mine looks like that. Then what you want to do is from the top part of the hanky, you're going to fold the neckline. So I take this and I just fold a triangle shape. Whoops, not quite that much, sorry. Just a little bit. So I'm folding that like a square. And I'm going to do that again. And I'm just going to finger press that down. Okay. Hopefully everybody's following me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully flip my hanky over like this. And I'm going to pull at this part right here. So right in the center, I'm going to pull this down just like this. And then I'm going to fold that. See if we can get it to go here. Where I crease that, we can now fold that right back. And it was going to create a triangle here, a triangle here, and a rectangle on the bottom. Okay, let me show you again what that looks like. So I'm taking the center, pulling it down, and then I'm just going to push the two sides over. Now, you do want to press this with your iron because it's going to make it easier for you in a little bit. All right. Oh, absolutely, Christine. This would be so fun to do. So fun to do with her. Okay. So the next step is to begin to create the bodice. And you do that by taking this side, folding it in. And taking this side and folding it in. And I like to try to bring it in as evenly as I can. Um, and I kind of look at the front to see how it looks. Um, this side is a little bit less. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that in. I'm going to iron that. And the final step is to fold out the cap sleeves. So all you do is do it, just fold out a triangle just like that. And you have these adorable little cap sleeves. Now what you do is just turn around your cute little dress. And then I usually will ad adjust the skirt a little bit. I like to keep this tight, but I do adjust my skirt a little bit just to make sure that I have it how I like it. Okay. 
and you could you could make it very full if you wanted so you could bring that out um, but I kind of keep it tucked back in there so at this point I just will give it a quick little iron And then you can kind of take the bodice and you can just move out the upper part where the bust would be. And there is your adorable little dress. So what I do then is I will take just some thread. So let's see, what did I do with my thread here? All right. And I will just tack the back of the dress now, if you don't want to sew, you can actually use glue. That's perfectly fine. Um, but all I do, I don't worry about the back of the dress much because I usually am putting these down either on a fabric square or in a journal. So I'm just going to tack these two together right here. And I just, just do two little tack stitches. And then I tie it off. Easy peasy. Whoops. All right. Can you guys hear the ducks behind me? We have a, a duck family across the street from where we live, and they're very noisy. Okay. So there is the first one. And then I do come in here, and I like to tack the sleeves just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put a knot here. And I'll trim that and then we'll tack the sleeves. And I'll just take and I just tack just a little bit right there so that um, that sleeve cap will stay out. This part's not necessary. It will pretty much stay out if you glue it down. But, but I like to just make sure that that cap sleeve stays out. So I just go on the underside. And I don't go all the way through to the front, but I'll just tack it real small. And that way I know my sleeve's not going to go anywhere. Just like that. And we'll tack this sleeve and we will be done. They are that simple, you guys. They are not difficult at all. Those of you who have stopped in, please say hello so I know who's in here. Everybody's being quiet tonight. So what do you think? Do you guys love these as much as I do? I think they are so stinking cute. They are just adorable. And they would be so cute in a variety of ways. Um, you could put these on the front of a journal. You can, as I said, you can put them on quilt blocks. You could put these on tea towels. Um, they would be so cute to put on little white tea towels. Okay, so here is, oh, isn't that so cute? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I want this dress to flare out just a little bit more. So I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to use my iron. Okay, you've made them out of paper. So Luann's made these out of paper, but yeah, the hankies are just so cute. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of pull it out a little bit, just adjust it to make the bottom of the dress a little bit bigger. There we go. Those are so cute. And you could do other things. I could take if I wanted to, um, you know, you could you could fold a maybe a different. And I like to kind of pull this out a little bit, too, so that you have this little little V here. So I just kind of pull this out. And then I'm going to tack those so I have this little V. So I just do the same thing. I grab my my thread. Yeah, Lori, these are perfect for your grandma's hankies. Um, the other great thing about these, you guys, is if you have vintage hankies that are family members' hankies, these are really fun. Um, I have made these for women, and they actually will 
will pin them on the insides of their wedding dresses if they're blue. Um, so you can make those cute little dresses and then um, they can, you know, give them to their daughters or they can do something with them, but they're just really, really fun. Um, but there's a lot you can do with them and, and, you know, you're not losing the integrity of the whole hanky. And even if you wanted to take out these stitches, you could take these stitches out and it would not hurt the hanky one bit because I'm just using very small um, tacking stitches. If you glued them, oh, wow, Lori, I would love to see those hankies. Those would be so amazing to see. Um, and so you, by just putting a couple little tack stitches in there, you're not hurting the integrity of the hanky at all. Um, and it can be um, taken out if need be. And you do have to kind of play with them a little bit especially the, the older ones that have been used more, they, they get a little, um, you know, they have a little more stretch to them. Now, if you really don't want to play with vintage Nate hankies and you're just worried about doing that, um, I do sell reproduction hankies um, because some people just don't want to, they don't want to use those vintage ones. So this purple one is actually a reproduction hanky um and i like the reproductions for different craft projects as well okay there we go isn't that cute and then you can start decorating up this cute little i have these little pearls right here Great question. So Luann says, how can you tell the difference between a reproduction and a vintage hanky? Okay, so I know these are reproduction. A, this one is a reproduction for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, the fabric that is used on this one compared to this one. And I know you guys can't, hold on, I need my right-handed and I'm trying to thread this left-handed. Well, come on, Rachel. There we go. Okay. So this one right here is vintage. This one is not. Um, the fabric is different and I know it's, you're probably not going to be able to see this very well, but the, um, I don't know how to explain it. The weave of the fabric is a newer weave. Um, so you can tell, let me grab a vintage one, um, a very vintage one. Okay, so here's a vintage linen one. And the weave is, you guys, it's going to be hard for you to see. But you can tell because the weave is darker in spots than others. Um, and it's not perfect. That's because you, you, that's how you know it's vintage. And see, this one has a hole in it. See how it's starting. Oops, sorry, I got it too close. It's starting to get a little bit of a tear. These are perfect um, for these dresses because you can cover that up. So even if yours has a hole in it, you can cover it up. But the other thing is you, I can feel this stamped on here and the stamp is very rough which means that even a stamped one that's vintage, I can't feel it at all. I can't feel it at all. Um, so this one is vintage. It's just, that's pretty much the only difference between the vintage reproductions. And basically what they did is they took a vintage fabric and they um, reproduced it. So people think they're getting vintage hankies. Um, you can buy these online. Um, usually you have to buy them in, in large quantities. So I buy them in large quantities because a lot of my quilter ladies like to use these to make little dresses, um, make little dress quilts. Okay, so I'm going to take this little thing of pearls right here 
And I'm going to add that. I know you probably can't see it very well on the screen. But all I'm going to do is hold this in place. And I'm just going to do, just going to stitch it on. And it's just, this is just a little plastic pearl strand. And I'm just hooking it. I know you guys probably can't see. But I'm just hooking it, looping it over the, the string that's in between the pearls. Just like that. And then what I will do is just go ahead and tie a knot. And you can dress these up as much as you want. You can add... Um, you can add a little bling like I did. You can actually use, I've seen ladies use puffy paint. You can go in and you can add some lace. So if I wanted some lace to be in here, I could go in here and just make it lacy. Let's see what that looks like if I added a little bit of lace in here. So we could add this little piece of lace on the inside of the dress fold. Sorry guys, I'm like fumble fingers tonight. I don't know what's going on here. Don't know what's going on. So we could do something like that. Oh, you got them as gifts, Nancy. How cool. Christine, you can buy them. Um, they're just not like they used to be. I have a distributor that gives that sells me these reproduction ones. Um, they're just not as nice as the old ones. I think I want to add this, you guys. What do you think? I think this is going to be really cute by adding this little bit of lace on the inside of this dress. Let's see what it looks like over here. So you could do something like that and give it a little more, you know, dress it up that way, which would be cute. Having that lace peek through just a little bit. And I could glue that. I could tack it. Um, I think I think I'm gonna just go ahead and tack it. I think it's just will be just as fast for me to do that. So give me just one second here. But you could just have so much fun with these. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go underneath here. I'm gonna put this lace under. And I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of fabric and I'm just tacking it. And I'm just doing a quick running stitch. Now, I don't need to sew this extremely well because it's not something people aren't going to be pulling on it. All I'm going to do is put this on a journal page or I really might go get some white tea towels. I think these would be so cute on some little tea towels. Wouldn't these be adorable spring tea towels? I think they would be cute. And it would be different, different than what I've seen before. So now you guys go and do that and make a million dollars. And just remember that Rachel at Super Cute Creations gave you the idea to put these on tea towels. That's usually what I do. I share all my great ideas with all of you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that lace, you guys. It looks so darn cute. Okay. Just a little bit more to do. So what else is everybody working on? Anybody going to try this? I'd love to see. Please post them. 
on super cute creations if you make these. I would love to see what your adorable little tea towel or your little um, hanky dresses look like because I think they're cute. And they are definitely cute for spring and summer. Oh, what is going on? This just wants to act up today. Well, somehow I got it stuck in the lace. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to make at least one. My mom turns 95 next time. Oh, wouldn't that be adorable? You guys, and Mother's Day is coming up too. Wouldn't that be cute to give mom, even if it's not your mom, maybe an aunt, a grandparent, a friend, someone, one of these cute little hankies for Mother's Day. Wouldn't that be cute? You could add a little poem to it. Oh, great idea. Great idea. Okay, there we go. Whew. It's giving me all kinds of trouble. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that idea. Okay, so I'm going to trim this. And now we're going to go ahead and do the other side with this cute little lace. And I'm using just a quick running stitch again. Let me get some more purling thread. And if I used regular thread, I wouldn't have as much trouble in the lace. But because I started with this, I just decided to stay with it. You guys, these could be put on boxes. These could be, I mean, you could decorate these up so cute, so many different ways. You could add little mini appliques. You could add a little bow. A cute little bow would be there. And I have a bunch of vintage earrings. So I might even dig in my little earring bin today and add a little, um, add a little gem in the center of this one. Cause I think that would be so cute. All right. So let me get this tucked in here. So cute. I know if my mom was still here, she would love one of these. And remember, you just want one layer of the fabric as you are putting this through. So I'm actually sticking my hand underneath the dress and making sure I'm just getting the one layer. I don't want to come through to the front side. And I'm just doing a long running stitch. I'm not worried about. Oh, she would love one of those, Luann. And they're super simple. I mean, you guys can whip one of these up tonight. Like this is not something that takes a long time. Um, it's taking me longer because I'm talking to you all. And and I mean, it's it's just you can whip these up so quickly. And they are just so stinking cute. In fact, I might, I think I'm going to make a few of these up and add them. I am opening up a new, um, hopefully, hopefully opening up a new antique booth soon. Um, and so I think these would be really cute there, too. So I think I'll add some of these to my booth. All right. Okay. So now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and press that again because it kind of turned out a little bit. Kind of turned out a little bit, and I want my lace to, whoops, my lace to go with my dress here. There. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, is this one cute? Oh, I love it. 
Okay, I'm adding a little bit of starch here because my lace is acting up. There we go. Look at that. Ah, love it, love it, love it. Look at how cute. And I could even add lace along her collar if I wanted to. Let's see what that looks like. Eh, I don't think I like the lace on there. I do have sales, Lori. In fact, I am selling Tuesday. It's actually time again. So this Tuesday on my channel, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, I will be having another live sale here. I have some awesome stuff for you guys. I have literally been searching and searching for fun stuff for you all. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a fun night, Tuesday night, this Tuesday. I think that's the fourth. I have to look at a calendar, but I think it's the fourth, um, Tuesday night. And we are going to have so many fun things. Let me grab some vintage earrings real quick. Oh, actually, here's my, here's my odds and ends earring. Been playing around getting rid of some of the, look at, we could add this. That would be cute. It's kind of big, but wouldn't that be cute? Let's see what else I have in here. This is kind of my, I'm working on some fun things for all you amazing people. And yes, I, I am going to tell you, it is going to be addicting. Um, so if you've not been to one of my sales, you have to join. Um, I have, give free giveaways during the sale. I also um do free um freebies if you purchase sorry guys i'm digging 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 to see what i have in here oh see if this was a darker dress i could add that little vintage earring in the center of it isn't that cute Okay, you want turquoise and teal dyed paper? Absolutely. Yep, I'll get some. I'll try to get some made up for Tuesday, my dear. If not, I'll get some made up this week and get it to you. So this is a vintage clip pearl, but I have a whole bunch of vintage. Let me grab my vintage earrings. I just bought a huge, huge lot of craft jewelry, you guys. Vintage earrings. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's it's completely and utterly out of control. Okay, here we go. Look at this. This is a vintage clip earring. Look at how stinking cute that is. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. So adorable. And all I did is take a clip earring and put that on there in the center. So another great way. Oh, thanks, Christine. Um, your package went out this week too, honey. You should be getting your new package. You have a lot of fun stuff in that one. So there you go. Those are how you make my fun little dresses. I hope you guys like them. Um, I hope you give them a try and I hope you get out some of that vintage stuff and just play. Look at that. This looks like something someone would wear. I know. Isn't that so cute? And look at, it's just a vintage piece, vintage piece. This is vintage lace and a vintage earring. I mean, oh my gosh, I just love it. And wouldn't this be cute? Like I could totally hang that on my wall. Okay, I want to play a little bit with trying to make a hanger again. I'm going to have to get online tonight, though, and see if I can get some little mini hangers. So I'm using a paper clip. And I cannot find my jewelry pliers, so I have my husband's multi-purpose tool here. So bear with me, you guys. And this one I didn't think was quite wide enough, so... 
try to make this one a little bit longer. I know it's not perfect, but let's see what I can do. Okay, so I want to go up with it like this and up with it like this. Yes, you have a good night too. Thanks, Christine. Hope to see you Tuesday. All right. Awesome. I'll see you Tuesday. Thanks for joining tonight. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do some pinching on both sides. Just like that. And then I'm going to pull that up. Well, it still kind of looks ugly on this side. Let's see if I can see if I can make this look a little better here. We'll try to round it out a little. Whoops. And I am working with a paper clip. I mean, I really should probably go get some wire. In fact, what I might do is have my husband build me a little jig to make these little wires, wire hangers. Sorry guys, I know I'm not in the camera, but I can't quite see. All right, so I'm gonna pinch that as best as I can. And then I'm going to get my round nose pliers. These are jewelry pliers. After I cut a little bit of this off. Well, maybe I don't have to. They're not perfect, but I mean, they do kind of look like hangers. And I could attach that little hanger to it. So not bad, you guys. It's not perfect, but I'm definitely going to get online and see if I can find some little wire hangers. Um, that we can hang our little dresses on. But I hope you all try those. I hope you get out some of your vintage jewelry, some of your vintage pieces. And I hope that you love this little tutorial as much as I do. And I cannot wait to see what kind of super cute creations you make. So have a wonderful week, everybody. Stop and see me Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. I hope, Lori, to see you. Um, in fact, I'm going to put my email in the um, chat. And if you would like to get on my mailing list for reminders of my sale, um, please send me an email and I will send you out our newsletter. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Luann. I can't wait to see you Tuesday. Bye, everybody. <laughs>